Hadith 1. Narrated on us, the people mentioned the fire and the bell, they suggested those as signals to indicate the starting of prayers, and by that they mentioned the Jews and the Christians. Then Bilal was ordered to pronounce Adon for the prayer by saying its wordings twice, and for the Akama, the call for the actual standing for the prayers in rows, by saying its wordings once. Ikama is pronounced when the people are ready for the prayer. Hadith 2 Narrated Ibn Umar, when the Muslims arrived at Medina, they used to assemble for the prayer, and used to guess the time for it. During those days, the practice of Adan for the prayers had not been introduced yet. Once they discussed this problem regarding the call for prayer. Some people suggested the use of a bell like the Christians, others proposed a trumpet like the horn used by the Jews, but Umar was the first to suggest that a man should call, the people, for the prayer. So Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, ordered Bilal to get up and pronounce the Adan for prayers. Hadith 3 Narrated on us, Bilal was ordered to repeat the wording of the Adan for prayers twice, and to pronounce the wording of the Akama once except, Qad Kamad as Salah. Hadith 4 Narrated on us bin Malik, when the number of Muslims increased, they discussed the question as to how to know the time for the prayer by some familiar means. Some suggested that a fire be lit, at the time of the prayer, and others put forward the proposal to ring the bell. Bilal was ordered to pronounce the wording of Adan twice, and of the Akama once only. Hadith 5 Narrated Abu Kilaba, Anna said, Bilal was ordered to pronounce the wording of Adan twice and of Ikama once only. The sub-narrator Ismail said, I mentioned that to Ayyub and he added, to that, except Ikama, that is, Qad Kamad is Salah, which should be said twice. Hadith 6 Narrated Abu Huraira, Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, said, when the Adan is pronounced, Satan takes to his heels and passes wind with noise during his flight in order not to hear the Adan. When the Adan is completed he comes back, and again takes to his heels when the Akama is pronounced, and after its completion he returns again till he whispers into the heart of the person, to divert his attention from his prayer, and makes him remember things which he does not recall to his mind before the prayer and that causes him to forget how much he has prayed. Hadith 7 Narrated Abdur Rahman, Abu Sa'id al Qudri told my father, I see you liking sheep and the wilderness. So whenever you are with your sheep or in the wilderness and you want to pronounce Adan for the prayer, raise your voice in doing so, for whoever hears the Adan, whether a human being, a jinn or any other creature, will be a witness for you on the day of resurrection. Abu Sa'id added, I heard it, this narration, from Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him. Hadith 8 Narrated Humayd, Anas bin Malik said, Whenever the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, went out with us to fight, in Allah's cause, against any nation, he never allowed us to attack till morning, and he would wait and see, if he heard Adan he would postpone the attack, and if he did not hear Adan he would attack them. Anas added, We reached Kaibar at night, and in the morning when he did not hear the Adan for the prayer, he, the Prophet, rode, and I rode behind Abi Tulha, and my foot was touching that of the Prophet. The inhabitants of Kaibar came out with their baskets and spades, and when they saw the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, they shouted, Muhammad. By Allah, Muhammad and his army. When Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, saw them, he said, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Kaibar is ruined. Whenever we approach a, hostile, nation, to fight, then evil will be the mourning of those who have been warned. Hadith 9 Narrated Abu Sa'id al-Qudri, Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Whenever you hear the Adan, say what the Mu'addin is saying. Hadith 10 Narrated Isa bin Tulha that he had heard Muawiyah repeating the words of Adan up to, and I testify that Muhammad is Allah's messenger, peace and blessings be upon him. Hadith 11 Narrated Yahya as above, and added, Some of my companions told me that Hisham had said, when the Muad'din said, Come for the prayer, Muawiyah said, 
there is neither might nor any power except with Allah, and added, We heard your prophet saying the same. Hadith 12 Narrated Jabir bin Abdullah, Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Whoever after listening to the Adan says, What means, O Allah? Lord of this perfect call, perfect by not ascribing partners to you, and of the regular prayer which is going to be established, give Muhammad the right of intercession and illustriousness, and resurrect him to the best and the highest place in paradise that you promised him, of, then my intercession for him will be allowed on the day of resurrection. Hadith 13 Narrated Abu Huraira, Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, said, If the people knew the reward for pronouncing the Adan and for standing in the first row, in congregational prayers, and found no other way to get that except by drawing lots, they would draw lots, and if they knew the reward of the Zuhr prayer, in the early moments of its stated time, they would race for it, go early, and if they knew the reward of Isha and Fajr, morning, prayers in congregation, they would come to offer them even if they had to crawl. Hadith 14 Narrated Abdullah bin Ul-Harith, once on a rainy muddy day, Ibn Abbas delivered a sermon in our presence, and when the Mu'addin pronounced the Adan and said, Come for the prayer, Ibn Abbas ordered him to say, Pray at your homes. The people began to look at each other surprisingly. Ibn Abbas said, It was done by one who was much better than I, that is, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, or his Mu'addin, and it is a license. Hadith 15 Narrated Salam bin Abdullah, My father said that Allah's Apostle said, Bilal pronounces Adan at night, so keep on eating and drinking, Suhur, till Ibn Um Maktum pronounces Adan. Salam added, He was a blind man who would not pronounce the Adan unless he was told that the day had dawned. Hadith 16 Narrated Hafsa, When the Mu'addin pronounced the Adan for Fajr prayer and the dawn became evident, the Prophet ordered a two rakat light prayer, Sunnah, before the Ikama of the compulsory, congregational, prayer. Hadith 17 Narrated Aisha, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, used to offer two light rakat between the Adan and the Ikama of the Fajr prayer. Hadith 18 Narrated Abdullah bin Umar, Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Bilal pronounces the Adan at night, so keep on eating and drinking, Suhur, till Ibn Um Maktum pronounces the Adan. Hadith 19 Narrated Abdullah bin Masud, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, The Adan pronounced by Bilal should not stop you from taking Suhur, for he pronounces the Adan at night, so that the one offering the late night prayer, Tahajud, from among you might hurry up, and the sleeping from among you might wake up. It does not mean that dawn or morning has started. Then the Prophet pointed with his fingers and raised them up, towards the sky, and then lowered them, towards the earth, like this, Ibn Masud imitated the gesture of the Prophet. Azuri gestured with his two index fingers which he put on each other and then stretched them to the right and left. These gestures illustrate the way real dawn appears. It spreads left and right horizontally. The dawn that appears in the high sky and lowers down is not the real dawn. Hadith 20 Narrated Aisha, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Bilal pronounces the Adan at night, so eat and drink, Suhur, till Ibn Um Maktum pronounces the Adan. Hadith 21 Narrated Abdullah bin Mughaffal ul mazani Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, said thrice, there is a prayer between the two Adans, Adan and Ikama, and added, for the one who wants to pray. Hadith 22 Narrated Anas bin Malik, when the Mu'addin pronounced the Adan, some of the companions of the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, would proceed to the pillars of the mosque, for the prayer, till the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, arrived, and in this way they used to pray two rakat before the Maghrib prayer. There used to be a little time between the Adan and the Akama. Shu'aba said, there used to be a very short interval between the two, Adan and Akama. Hadith 23 Narrated Aisha, Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, 
used to pray two light rakat before the morning, compulsory, prayer after the day dawned and the Muad'Din had finished his Adhan. He then would lie on his right side till the Muad'Din came to pronounce the Akama. Hadith 24 Narrated Abdullah bin Mughaffal, the Prophet said, There is a prayer between the two Adhans, Adhan and Akama, there is a prayer between the two Adhans. And then, while saying it the third time, he added, For the one who wants to, pray. Hadith 25 Narrated Malik bin Huwairith, I came to the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, with some men from my tribe and stayed with him for twenty nights. He was kind and merciful to us. When he realized our longing for our families, he said to us, Go back and stay with your families, and teach them the religion and offer the prayer, and one of you should pronounce the Adhan for the prayer when its time is due, and the oldest one amongst you should lead the prayer. Hadith 26 Narrated Abu Dar, we were in the company of the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, on a journey, and the Muad'Din wanted to pronounce the Adhan for the Zuhr prayer. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said to him, Let it become cooler. Then he again wanted to pronounce the Adhan, but the Prophet said to him, Let it become cooler. The Muad'Din again wanted to pronounce the Adhan for the prayer, but the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Let it become cooler, till the shadows of the hillocks become equal to their sizes. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, added, The severity of the heat is from the raging of hell. Hadith 27 Narrated Malik bin Huwairith, two men came to the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, with the intention of a journey. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, When, both of, you set out, pronounce Adan and then Ikama, and the oldest of you should lead the prayer. Hadith 28 Narrated Malik, we came to the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, and stayed with him for twenty days and nights. We were all young and of about the same age. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, was very kind and merciful. When he realized our longing for our families, he asked about our homes and the people there and we told him. Then he asked us to go back to our families and stay with them and teach them, the religion, and to order them to do good things. He also mentioned some other things which I have, remembered or, forgotten. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, then added, Pray as you have seen me praying, and when it is the time for the prayer, one of you should pronounce the Adhan and the oldest of you should lead the prayer. Hadith 29 Narrated Nafi, once in a cold night, Ibn Umar pronounced the Adhan for the prayer at Dajnan, the name of a mountain, and then said, Pray at your homes, and informed us that Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, used to tell the Muad'Din to pronounce Adhan and say, Pray at your homes, at the end of the Adhan on a rainy or a very cold night during the journey. Hadith 30 Narrated Awn bin Abi Juhaifa, my father said, I saw Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, at a place called Al-Abta. Bilal came and informed him about the prayer and then came out with a short spear, or stick, and planted it in front of Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, at Al-Abta and pronounced the Akama. Hadith 31 Narrated Awn bin Abi Juhaifa, my father said, I saw Bilal turning his face from side to side while pronouncing the Adhan for the prayer. Hadith 32 Narrated Abdullah bin Abi Qatada, my father said, while we were praying with the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, he heard the noise of some people. After the prayer he said, What is the matter? They replied, We were hurrying for the prayer. He said, Do not make haste for the prayer and whenever you come for the prayer, you should come with calmness, and pray whatever you get, with the people, and complete the rest which you have missed. Hadith 33 Narrated Abu Huraira, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, When you hear the Akama, proceed to offer the prayer with calmness and solemnity, and do not make haste. And pray whatever you are able to pray, and complete whatever you have missed. Hadith 34 Narrated Abdullah bin Abi Qatada, my father said, Allah's Messenger, 
peace and blessings be upon him, said, If the Akama is pronounced, then do not stand for the prayer till you see me, in front of you. Hadith 35 Narrated Abdullah bin Abi Qatada, my father said, Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, said, If the Akama is pronounced, then do not stand for the prayer till you see me, in front of you, and do it calmly. Hadith 36 Narrated Abu Huraira, Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, went out, of the mosque, when the Akama had been pronounced and the rose straightened. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, stood at his musalla, praying place, and we waited for the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, to begin the prayer with takbir. He left and asked us to remain in our places. We kept on standing till the Prophet returned, and the water was trickling from his head for he had taken a bath, of Janaba. Hadith 37 Narrated Abu Huraira, once Ikama was pronounced and the people had straightened the rose, Allah's messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, went forward, to lead the prayer, but he was Junub, so he said, Remain in your places. And he went out, took a bath and returned with water trickling from his head. Then he led the prayer. Hadith 38 Narrated Jabir bin Abdullah, on the day of Ul Kunduk, the trench, Umar bin Ul Khattab went to the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, and said, O Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him. By Allah, I could not pray, the Usr, till the sun had set. Umar told this to the Prophet at the time when a fasting person had done iftar, taken his meals. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, then went to Budhan and I was with him. He performed ablution and offered the Usr prayer after the sun had set, and then the Maghrib prayer. Hadith 39 Narrated on us, once the Akama was pronounced and the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, was talking to a man, in a low voice, in a corner of the mosque, and he did not lead the prayer till, some of, the people had slept, dozed in a sitting posture. Hadith 40 Narrated Anas bin Malik, once Ikama was pronounced, a man came to the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, and detained him, from the prayer. Hadith 41 Narrated Abu Huraira, Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, said, By him in whose hand my soul is, I was about to order for collecting firewood, fuel, and then order someone to pronounce the Adan for the prayer and then order someone to lead the prayer, then I would go from behind and burn the houses of men who did not present themselves for the compulsory congregational prayer. By him, in whose hands my soul is, if any one of them had known that he would get a bone covered with good meat or two small pieces of meat present in between two ribs, he would have turned up for the Isha prayer. Hadith 42 Narrated Abdullah bin Umar, Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, said, the prayer in congregation is twenty-seven times superior to the prayer offered by a person alone. Hadith 43 Narrated Abu Sa'id al-Qudri, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, the prayer in congregation is twenty-five times superior to the prayer offered by a person alone. Hadith 44 Narrated Abu Huraira, Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, said, the reward of the prayer offered by a person in congregation is twenty-five times greater than that of the prayer offered in one's house or in the market, alone. And this is because if he performs ablution and does it perfectly and then proceeds to the mosque with the sole intention of praying, then for every step he takes towards the mosque, he is upgraded one degree in reward and his one sin is taken off, crossed out, from his accounts, of deeds. When he offers his prayer, the angels keep on asking Allah's blessings and Allah's forgiveness for him, as long as he is, staying, at his musalla. They say, O Allah! Bestow your blessings upon him, be merciful and kind to him. And one is regarded in prayer as long as one is waiting for the prayer. Hadith 45 Narrated Abu Salamah bin Abdur Rahman, Abu Huraira said, I heard Allah's messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, saying, the reward of a prayer in congregation is twenty-five times greater than that of a prayer offered by a person alone. 
The angels of the night and the angels of the day gather at the time of Fajr prayer. Abu Hurairah then added, Recite the holy book if you wish, for, indeed, the recitation of the Qur'an in the early dawn, Fajr prayer, is ever witnessed. Surah 17, Ayah 78 Hadith 46 Narrated Abdullah bin Umar, the reward of the congregational prayer is twenty-seven times greater, than that of the prayer offered by a person alone. Hadith 47 Narrated Salim, I heard Umm ad darda saying, Abu ad darda entered the house in an angry mood. I said to him, What makes you angry? He replied, By Allah. I do not find the followers of Muhammad doing those good things, which they used to do before, except the offering of congregational prayer. This happened in the last days of Abu ad darda during the rule of Uthman. Hadith 48 Narrated Abu Musa, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, The people who get tremendous reward for the prayer are those who are farthest away, from the mosque, and then those who are next farthest, and so on. Similarly one who waits to pray with the Imam has greater reward than one who prays and goes to bed. Hadith 49 Narrated Abu Huraira, Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, said, While a man was going on a way, he saw a thorny branch and removed it from the way, and Allah became pleased by his action and forgave him for that. Then the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Five are martyrs, one who dies of plague, one who dies of an abdominal disease, one who dies of drowning, one who is buried alive, and dies and one who is killed in Allah's cause. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, further said, if the people knew the reward for pronouncing the Adhan and for standing in the first row, in the congregational prayer, and found no other way to get it except by drawing lots, they would do so, and if they knew the reward of offering the Zuhr prayer early, in its stated time, they would race for it, and if they knew the reward for Isha and Fajr prayers in congregation, they would attend them even if they were to crawl. Hadith 50 Narrated Humayd, Anna said, The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, O Bani Salama. Don't you think that for every step of yours, that you take towards the mosque, there is a reward, while coming for prayer? Mujahid said, regarding Allah's statement, we record that which they have sent before, them, and their traces, Surah 36, Ayah 12. Their traces means, their steps. And Anna said that the people of Bani Salama wanted to shift to a place near the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, but Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, disliked the idea of leaving their houses uninhabited and said, Don't you think that you will get the reward for your footprints? Mujahid said, Their footprints mean their footsteps and their going on foot. Hadith 51 Narrated Abu Huraira, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, No prayer is heavier upon the hypocrites than the Fajr and the Isha prayers, and if they knew what is in them, in reward, they would have attended them, even if, it was, crawling. Certainly, I felt the urge to order the Muad'Din, call maker, so that he would pronounce a comma, then order a man to lead the people, in prayer, then take a flame of fire so that I burn, the houses, upon those who had not left for the prayer yet. Hadith 52 Narrated Malik bin Huwairith, Prophet said, to two persons, whenever the prayer time becomes due, you should pronounce Adan and then Ikama, and the older of you should lead the prayer. Hadith 53 Narrated Abu Hurairah, Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, said, the angels keep on asking for Allah's blessing and forgiveness for any one of you, as long as he is at his musalla, praying place, and does not do hadath, passes wind. The angels say, O Allah! Forgive him and be merciful to him. Each one of you is in the prayer as long as he is waiting for the prayer and nothing but the prayer detains him from going to his family. Hadith 54 Narrated Abu Huraira, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Allah will give shade to seven on the day when there will be no shade but his. These seven persons are, a just ruler, a youth who has been brought up in the worship of Allah, that is, worships Allah sincerely from childhood, 
a man whose heart is attached to the mosques, that is, to pray the compulsory prayers in the mosque in congregation, two persons who love each other only for Allah's sake and they meet and part in Allah's cause only, a man who refuses the call of a charming woman of noble birth for illicit intercourse with her and says, I am afraid of Allah. A man who gives charitable gifts so secretly that his left hand does not know what his right hand has given, that is, nobody knows how much he has given in charity, and a person who remembers Allah in seclusion and his eyes are then flooded with tears. Hadith 55 Narrated Humayd, Anas was asked, Did Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, wear a ring? He said, Yes. Once he delayed the Isha prayer till midnight and after the prayer, he faced us and said, The people prayed and have slept, and you remained in prayer as long as you waited for it. Anas added, As if I were just now observing the glitter of his ring. Hadith 56 Narrated Abu Huraira, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Allah will prepare for him who goes to the mosque, every, morning and in the afternoon, for the congregational prayer an honorable place in paradise with good hospitality for, what he has done, every morning and afternoon goings. Hadith 57 Narrated Malik ibn Buhayna, Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, passed by a man praying two rakat after the akama, had been pronounced. When Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, completed the prayer, the people gathered around him, the Prophet, or that man, and Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, said to him, protesting, Are there four rakat in Fajr prayer? Are there four rakat in Fajr prayer? Hadith 58 Narrated Allah Swad, we were with Aisha discussing the regularity of offering the prayer and dignifying it. She said, When Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, fell sick with the fatal illness, and when the time of prayer became due and Adan was pronounced, he said, Tell Abu Bakr to lead the people in prayer. He was told that Abu Bakr was a soft-hearted man and would not be able to lead the prayer in his place. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, gave the same order again, but he was given the same reply. He gave the order for the third time and said, You, women, are the companions of Joseph. Tell Abu Bakr to lead the prayer. So Abu Bakr came out to lead the prayer. In the meantime, the condition of the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, improved a bit and he came out with the help of two men, one on each side. As if I was observing his legs dragging on the ground owing to the disease. Abu Bakr wanted to retreat, but the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, beckoned him to remain at his place, and the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, was brought till he sat beside Abu Bakr. Allah Amash was asked, Was the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, praying and Abu Bakr following him, and were the people following Abu Bakr in that prayer? Allah Amash replied in the affirmative with a nod of his head. Abu Muawiyah said, The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, was sitting on the left side of Abu Bakr who was praying while standing. Hadith 59 Narrated Aisha, When the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, became seriously ill and his disease became aggravated, he asked for permission from his wives to be nursed in my house and he was allowed. He came out with the help of two men and his legs were dragging on the ground. He was between Allah Abbas and another man. Ubaidullah said, I told Ibn Abbas what Aisha had narrated, and he said, Do you know who was the second man whose name Aisha did not mention? I said, no. Ibn Abbas said, he was Ali ibn Abi Talib. Hadith 60 Narrated Nafi, once on a very cold and stormy night, Ibn Umar pronounced the Adan for the prayer and then said, pray in your homes. He, Ibn Umar, added, on very cold and rainy nights, Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, used to order the Mu'addin to say, pray in your homes. Hadith 61 Narrated Mahmud bin Rabia al-Ansari, Itban bin Malik used to lead his people, tribe, in prayer and was a blind man, he said to Allah's Apostle, O Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him. At times it is dark and flood water is flowing, in the valley, 
and I am a blind man, so please pray at a place in my house so that I can take it as a musalla, praying place. So Allah's messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, went to his house and said, Where do you like me to pray? Itban pointed to a place in his house and Allah's messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, offered the prayer there. Hadith 62 Narrated Abdullah bin al-Harith, Ibn Abbas addressed us on a rainy and muddy day, and when the Mu'addin said, Come for the prayer, Ibn Abbas ordered him to say, Pray in your homes. The people began to look at one another with surprise as if they did not like it. Ibn Abbas said, It seems that you thought ill of it, but no doubt it was done by one who was better than I, that is, the Prophet. It, the prayer, is a strict order and I dislike to bring you out. Ibn Abbas narrated the same as above but he said, I did not like you to make you sinful, in refraining from coming to the mosque, and to come, to the mosque, covered with mud up to the knees. Hadith 63 Narrated Abu Sa'id al-Qudri, a cloud came and it rained till the roof started leaking, and in those days the roof used to be of the branches of date palms. Ikama was pronounced and I saw Allah's messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, prostrating in water and mud, and even I saw the mark of mud on his forehead. Hadith 64 Narrated Anas bin Sirin, I heard Anas saying, a man from Ansar said to the Prophet, I cannot pray with you, in congregation. He was a very fat man and he prepared a meal for the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, and invited him to his house. He spread out a mat for the Prophet, and washed one of its sides with water, and the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, prayed two rakat on it. A man from the family of old Jarud asked, Did the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, used to pray the duha, forenoon, prayer? Anna said, I did not see him praying the duha prayer except on that day. Hadith 65 Narrated Aisha, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, If supper is served and ikama is pronounced, one should start with the supper. Hadith 66 Narrated Anas bin Malik, Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, said, If the supper is served, start having it before praying the Maghrib prayer, and do not be hasty in finishing it. Hadith 67 Narrated Nafi, Ibn Umar said, Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, said, If the supper is served for any one of you and the ikama is pronounced, start with the supper and don't be in haste, and carry on eating, till you finish it. If food was served for Ibn Umar and Ikama was pronounced, he never came to the prayer till he finished it, that is, food, in spite of the fact that he heard the recitation, of the Quran, by the Imam, in the prayer. Hadith 68 Narrated Ibn Umar, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, if any one of you is having his meals, he should not hurry up till he is satisfied, even if the prayer has been started. Hadith 69 Narrated Jafar bin Umar bin Umayyah, my father said, I saw Allah's messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, eating a piece of meat from the shoulder of a sheep and he was called for the prayer. He stood up, put down the knife and prayed, but did not perform ablution. Hadith 70 Narrated Al-Aswad, that he asked Aisha, what did the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, used to do in his house? She replied, he used to keep himself busy serving his family, and when it was the time for prayer he would go for it. Hadith 71 Narrated Ayyub, Abu Kilabah said, Malik bin Huwairith came to this mosque of ours and said, I pray in front of you, and my aim is not to lead the prayer but to show you the way in which the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, used to pray. I asked Abu Kilaba, how did he use to pray? He replied, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, used to pray, like this sheikh of ours, and the sheikh used to sit for a while after the prostration, before getting up after the first rakah. Hadith 72 Narrated Abu Musa, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, became sick and when his disease became aggravated, he said, tell Abu Bakr to lead the prayer. Aisha said, he is a soft-hearted man and would not be able to lead the prayer in your place. The Prophet, 
peace and blessings be upon him, said again, tell Abu Bakr to lead the people in prayer. She repeated the same reply, but he said, tell Abu Bakr to lead the people in prayer. You are the companions of Joseph. So the messenger went to Abu Bakr, with that order, and he led the people in prayer in the lifetime of the Prophet. Hadith 73 Narrated Aisha, the mother of the believers, Allah's messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, in his illness said, tell Abu Bakr to lead the people in prayer. I said to him, if Abu Bakr stands in your place, the people would not hear him owing to his, excessive, weeping. So please order Umar to lead the prayer. Aisha added, I said to Hafsa, say to him, if Abu Bakr should lead the people in the prayer in your place, the people would not be able to hear him owing to his weeping, so please, order Umar to lead the prayer. Hafsa did so, but Allah's apostle said, Keep quiet. You are verily the companions of Joseph. Tell Abu Bakr to lead the people in the prayer. Hafsa said to Aisha, I never got anything good from you. Hadith 74 Narrated az Zuhri, Anas bin Malik al Ansari told me, Abu Bakr used to lead the people in prayer during the fatal illness of the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, till it was Monday. When the people aligned, in rows, for the prayer, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, lifted the curtain of his house and started looking at us and was standing at that time. His face was, glittering, like a page of the Quran and he smiled cheerfully. We were about to be put to trial for the pleasure of seeing the Prophet, Abu Bakr retreated to join the row as he thought that the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, would lead the prayer. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, beckoned us to complete the prayer and he let the curtain fall. On the same day he died. Hadith 75 Narrated on us, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, did not come out for three days. The people stood for the prayer and Abu Bakr went ahead to lead the prayer. In the meantime, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, caught hold of the curtain and lifted it. When the face of the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, appeared, we had never seen a scene more pleasing than the face of the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, as it appeared then. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, beckoned to Abu Bakr to lead the people in the prayer and then let the curtain fall. We did not see him, again, till he died. Hadith 76 Narrated Hamza bin Abdullah, my father said, when Allah's messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, became seriously ill, he was told about the prayer. He said, tell Abu Bakr to lead the people in the prayer. Aisha said, Abu Bakr is a soft-hearted man, and he would be overpowered by his weeping if he recited the Quran. He said to them, tell him, Abu Bakr, to lead the prayer. The same reply was given to him. He said again, tell him to lead the prayer. You, women, are the companions of Joseph. Hadith 77 Narrated Hisham ibn Urwa's father, Aisha said, Allah's messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, ordered Abu Bakr to lead the people in the prayer during his illness, and so he led them in prayer. Urwa, a sub-narrator, added, Allah's messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, felt a bit relieved and came out, and Abu Bakr was leading the people. When Abu Bakr saw the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, he retreated, but the Prophet beckoned him to remain there. Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, sat beside Abu Bakr. Abu Bakr was following the prayer of Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, and the people were following the prayer of Abu Bakr. Hadith 78 Narrated Sahul bin Sa'd Sa'idi, Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, went to establish peace among Bani Amr bin Auf. In the meantime the time of prayer was due and the Mu'addin went to Abu Bakr and said, Will you lead the prayer, so that I may pronounce the Akama? Abu Bakr replied in the affirmative and led the prayer. Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, came while the people were still praying, and he entered the rows of the praying people till he stood in the first row. The people clapped their hands. Abu Bakr never glanced sideways in his prayer, 
but when the people continued clapping, Abu Bakr looked and saw Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him. Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, beckoned him to stay at his place. Abu Bakr raised his hands and thanked Allah for that order of Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, and then he retreated till he reached the first row. Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, went forward and led the prayer. When Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, finished the prayer, he said, O oh Abu Bakr! What prevented you from staying when I ordered you to do so? Abu Bakr replied, How can Ibn Abi Kuhafa, Abu Bakr, dare to lead the prayer in the presence of Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him? Then Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Why did you clap so much? If something happens to anyone during his prayer, he should say Subhan Allah. If he says so he will be attended to, for clapping is for women. Hadith 79 Narrated Malik bin Huwairith, We went to the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, and we were all young men, and stayed with him for about twenty nights. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, was very merciful. He said, When you return home, impart religious teachings to your families and tell them to offer perfectly such and such a prayer at such and such a time, and such and such a prayer at such and such a time. And at the time of the prayer, one of you should pronounce the Adhan and the oldest of you should lead the prayer. Hadith 80 Narrated at Ban bin Malik al-Ansari, the Prophet, came to my house and, asked permission for entering and I allowed him. He asked, Where do you like me to pray in your house? I pointed to a place which I liked. He stood up for prayer and we aligned behind him, and he finished the prayer with Tuslim and we did the same. Hadith 81 Narrated Ubaidullah ibn Abdullah bin Utbah, I went to Aisha and asked her to describe to me the illness of Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him. Aisha said, Yes. The Prophet became seriously ill and asked whether the people had prayed. We replied, No. O oh Allah's Apostle! They are waiting for you. He added, Put water for me in a trough. Aisha added, We did so. He took a bath and tried to get up, but fainted. When he recovered, he again asked whether the people had prayed. We said, No, they are waiting for you, O oh Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him. He again said, Put water in a trough for me. He sat down and took a bath and tried to get up, but fainted again. Then he recovered and said, Have the people prayed? We replied, No, they are waiting for you, O Allah's Apostle. He said, Put water for me in the trough. Then he sat down and washed himself and tried to get up, but he fainted. When he recovered, he asked, Have the people prayed? We said, No, they are waiting for you, O Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him. The people were in the mosque waiting for the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, for the Isha prayer. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, sent for Abu Bakr to lead the people in the prayer. The Messenger went to Abu Bakr and said, Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, orders you to lead the people in the prayer. Abu Bakr was a soft-hearted man, so he asked Umar to lead the prayer but Umar replied, You are more rightful. So Abu Bakr led the prayer in those days. When the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, felt a bit better, he came out for the Zuhr prayer with the help of two persons, one of whom was Al Abbas, while Abu Bakr was leading the people in the prayer. When Abu Bakr saw him, he wanted to retreat, but the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, beckoned him not to do so and asked them to make him sit beside Abu Bakr, and they did so. Abu Bakr was following the Prophet, in the prayer, and the people were following Abu Bakr. The Prophet, prayed, sitting. Ubaidullah added, I went to Abdullah bin Abbas and asked him, Shall I tell you what Aisha has told me about the fatal illness of the Prophet? Ibn Abbas said, Go ahead. I told him her narration and he did not deny anything of it, but asked whether Aisha told me the name of the second person, who helped the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, 
along with Al Abbas. I said, no. He said, he was Ali, ibn Abi Talib. Hadith 82 Narrated Aisha, the mother of the believers, Allah's messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, during his illness prayed at his house while sitting, whereas some people prayed behind him standing. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, beckoned them to sit down. On completion of the prayer, he said, the Imam is to be followed, bow when he bows, raise up your heads, stand erect, when he raises his head, and when he says, what means, Allah heard those who sent praises to him, say then, what means, O our Lord. All the praises are for you, and if he prays sitting then pray sitting. Hadith 83 Narrated Anas bin Malik, once Allah's messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, rode a horse and fell down and the right side, of his body, was injured. He offered one of the prayers while sitting, and we also prayed behind him sitting. When he completed the prayer, he said, the Imam is to be followed. Pray standing if he prays standing, and bow when he bows, rise when he rises, and if he says, what means, Allah heard those who sent praises to him, say then, what means, O our Lord. All the praises are for you, and pray standing if he prays standing, and pray sitting, all of you, if he prays sitting. Humayd said, the saying of the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, pray sitting, if he, Imam, pray sitting was said in his former illness, during his early life, but the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, prayed sitting afterwards, in the last illness, and the people were praying standing behind him, and the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, did not order them to sit. We should follow the latest actions of the Prophet. Hadith 84 Narrated al bara and he was not a liar, when Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, said, What means, Allah heard those who sent praises to him, none of us bent his back, for prostration, till the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, prostrated, and then we would prostrate after him. Hadith 85 Narrated Abu Ishaq, as above. Hadith 86 Narrated Abu Hurairah, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Isn't he who raises his head before the Imam afraid that Allah may transform his head into that of a donkey, or his figure, face, into that of a donkey? Hadith 87 Narrated Ibn Umar, when the earliest emigrants came to al a place in Kaaba, before the arrival of the Prophet, Salam, the slave of Abu Hudayfa, who knew the Qur'an more than the others used to lead them in prayer. Hadith 88 Narrated on us, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Listen and obey, your chief, even if an Ethiopian whose head is like a raisin were made your chief. Hadith 89 Narrated Abu Huraira, Allah's messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, said, If the Imam leads the prayer correctly, then he and you will receive the rewards, but if he makes a mistake, in the prayer, then you will receive the reward for the prayer and the sin will be his. Hadith 90 Narrated Ubaidullah bin Adi bin Kiyar, I went to Uthman bin Affan while he was besieged, and said to him, You are the chief of all Muslims in general, and you see what has befallen you. We are led in the Salat, prayer, by a leader of al fitan trials and afflictions etc., and we are afraid of being sinful in following him. Uthman said, As Salat, the prayers, is the best of all deeds, so when the people do good deeds, do the same with them, and when they do bad deeds, avoid those bad deeds. Az-Zuhri said, in our opinion one should not offer salat behind an effeminate person unless there is no alternative. Hadith 91 Narrated Anas bin Malik, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said to Abu Dar, listen and obey, your chief, even if he is an Ethiopian with a head like a raisin. Hadith 92 Narrated Ibn Abbas, Once I passed the night in the house of my aunt Maimuna. Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, offered the Isha prayer, and then came to the house and offered four rakat and slept. Later on, he woke up and stood for the prayer, and I stood on his left side. He drew me to his right and prayed five rakat and then two. 
He then slept till I heard him snoring, or heard his breath sounds. Afterwards he went out for the morning prayer. Hadith 93 Narrated Ibn Abbas, One night I slept at the house of, my aunt, Maimuna, and the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, was there on that night. He performed ablution and stood up for the prayer. I joined him and stood on his left side, but he drew me to his right and prayed thirteen rakat, and then slept till I heard his breath sounds. And whenever he slept, he used to breathe with audible sounds. The Mu'addin came to the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, and he went out and prayed the morning prayer without repeating the ablution. Hadith 94 Narrated Ibn Abbas once I passed the night in the house of my aunt Maimuna. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, stood for the night prayer, and I joined him and stood on his left side, but he drew me to his right by holding me by the head. Hadith 95 Narrated Mu'ad bin Jabal, I used to pray the Isha prayer with the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, and then go to lead my people in the prayer. Hadith 96 Narrated Umar Jabir bin Abdullah said, Mu'ad bin Jabal used to pray with the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, and then go to lead his people in prayer. Once he led the Isha prayer and recited Surah al-Baqarah. Somebody left the prayer and Mu'ad criticized him. The news reached the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, and he said to Mu'ad, you are putting the people to trial, and repeated it thrice, or said something similar, and ordered him to recite two medium surahs of Mufassal. Umar said that he had forgotten the names of those surahs. Hadith 97 Narrated Abu Masud, a man came and said, O Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him. By Allah, I keep away from the morning prayer only because so and so prolongs the prayer when he leads us in it. The narrator said, I never saw Allah's Apostle more furious in giving advice than he was at that time. He then said, Some of you make people dislike good deeds, the prayer. So whoever among you leads the people in prayer should shorten it, because among them are the weak, the old, and the needy. Hadith 98 Narrated Abu Hurairah, Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, said, If any one of you leads the people in the prayer, he should shorten it, for amongst them are the weak, the sick and the old, and if anyone among you prays alone, then he may prolong, the prayer, as much as he wishes. Hadith 99 Narrated Abu Masud, a man came and said, O Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him. I keep away from the morning prayer because so and so, Imam, prolongs it too much. Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, became furious, and I had never seen him more furious than he was on that day. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, O people! Some of you make others dislike the prayer, so whoever becomes an imam, he should shorten the prayer, as behind him are the weak, the old, and the needy. Hadith 100 Narrated Jabir bin Abdullah al-Ansari, once a man was driving two nadihas, camels used for agricultural purposes, and night had fallen. He found Mu'ad praying, so he made his camel kneel and joined Mu'ad in the prayer. The latter recited Surah al-Baqarah or Surah An-Nisa, so, the man left the prayer and went away. When he came to know that Mu'ad had criticized him, he went to the Prophet, and complained against Mu'ad. The Prophet said thrice, O Mu'ad! Are you putting the people to trial? It would have been better if you had recited Surah al Allah. Surah 87, Surah Duha, Surah 91, or Surah Al-Layl, Surah 92, for the old, the weak and the needy pray behind you. Jabir said that Mu'ad recited Surah Al-Baqarah in the Isha prayer. Hadith 101 Narrated on us, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, used to pray a short prayer, in congregation, but used to offer it in a perfect manner. Hadith 102 Narrated Abdullah bin Abi Qatada, my father said, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, when I stand for prayer, I intend to prolong it, but on hearing the cries of a child, I cut it short, as I dislike to trouble the child's mother. 
Hadith 103. Narrated on us bin Malik, I never prayed behind any imam a prayer lighter and more perfect than that behind the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, and he used to cut short the prayer whenever he heard the cries of a child lest he should put the child's mother to trial. Hadith 104. Narrated on us bin Malik, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, When I start the prayer I intend to prolong it, but on hearing the cries of a child, I cut short the prayer because I know that the cries of the child will incite its mother's passions. Hadith 105 Narrated Anas bin Malik, the Prophet said, Whenever I start the prayer I intend to prolong it, but on hearing the cries of a child, I cut short the prayer because I know that the cries of the child will incite its mother's passions. Hadith 106 Narrated Jabir bin Abdullah, Mu'ad used to pray with the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, and then go and lead his people, tribe, in the prayer. Hadith 107 Narrated Aisha, when the Prophet became ill in his fatal illness, someone came to inform him about the prayer, and the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, told him to tell Abu Bakr to lead the people in the prayer. I said, Abu Bakr is a soft-hearted man and if he stands for the prayer in your place, he would weep and would not be able to recite the Quran. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Tell Abu Bakr to lead the prayer. I said the same as before. He, repeated the same order and, on the third or the fourth time he said, You are the companions of Joseph. Tell Abu Bakr to lead the prayer. So Abu Bakr led the prayer, and meanwhile the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, felt better and came out with the help of two men, as if I see him just now dragging his feet on the ground. When Abu Bakr saw him, he tried to retreat, but the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, beckoned him to carry on. Abu Bakr retreated a bit and the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, sat on his, left, side. Abu Bakr was repeating the takbir, Allahu Akbar, of Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, for the people to hear. Hadith 108 Narrated Aisha, when Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, became seriously ill, Bilal came to him for the prayer. He said, Tell Abu Bakr to lead the people in the prayer. I said, O Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him. Abu Bakr is a soft-hearted man, and if he stands in your place, he would not be able to make the people hear him. Will you order Umar, to lead the prayer? The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Tell Abu Bakr to lead the people in the prayer. Then I said to Hafsa, Tell him, Abu Bakr is a soft-hearted man, and if he stands in his place, he would not be able to make the people hear him. Would you order Umar to lead the prayer? Hafsa did so. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Verily you are the companions of Joseph. Tell Abu Bakr to lead the people in the prayer. So Abu Bakr stood for the prayer. In the meantime, Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, felt better and came out with the help of two persons, and both of his legs were dragging on the ground till he entered the mosque. When Abu Bakr heard him coming, he tried to retreat but Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, beckoned him to carry on. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, sat on his left side. Abu Bakr was praying while standing and Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, was leading the prayer while sitting. Abu Bakr was following the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, and the people were following Abu Bakr, in the prayer. Hadith 109 Narrated Abu Huraira, once Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, prayed two rakat, instead of four, and finished his prayer. Dul Yadain asked him whether the prayer had been reduced or whether he had forgotten. Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, asked the people whether Dul Yadain was telling the truth. The people replied in the affirmative. Then Allah's Apostle stood up, offered the remaining two rakat and then finished his prayer with Taslim, and then said, Allahu Akbar. He followed it with two prostrations like ordinary prostrations or a bit longer. Hadith 110 
Narrated Abu Huraira, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, prayed two rakat of Zuhr prayer, instead of four, and he was told that he had prayed two rakat only. Then he prayed two more rakat and finished them with the taslim followed by two prostrations. Hadith 111 Narrated Aisha, the mother of the faithful believers, Allah's messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, in his last illness said, Tell Abu Bakr to lead the people in the prayer. I said, If Abu Bakr stood in your place, he would not be able to make the people hear him owing to his weeping. So please order Umar to lead the prayer. He said, Tell Abu Bakr to lead the people in the prayer. I said to Hafsa, Say to him, Abu Bakr is a soft-hearted man, and if he stood in your place he would not be able to make the people hear him owing to his weeping. So order Umar to lead the people in the prayer. Hafsah did so, but Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Keep quiet. Verily you are the companions of, Prophet, Joseph. Tell Abu Bakr to lead the people in the prayer. Hafsah said to me, I never got any good from you. Hadith 112 Narrated an Nu'aman bin Bashir, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Straighten your rows or Allah will alter your faces. Hadith 113 Narrated on us, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Straighten your rows, for I see you from behind my back. Hadith 114 Narrated on us bin Malik, once the Akama was pronounced and Allah's messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, faced us and said, Straighten your rows and stand closer together, for I see you from behind my back. Hadith 115 Narrated Abu Huraira, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Martyrs are those who die because of drowning, plague, an abdominal disease, or of being buried alive by a falling building. And then he added, if the people knew the reward for the Zuhr prayer in its early time, they would race for it. If they knew the reward for the Isha and the Fajr prayers in congregation, they would join them even if they had to crawl. If they knew the reward for the first row, they would draw lots for it. Hadith 116 Narrated Abu Huraira, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, The Imam is, appointed, to be followed. So do not differ from him, bow when he bows, and say, What means, O our Lord? All the praises are for you, if he says, What means, Allah heard those who sent praises to him, and if he prostrates, prostrate, after him, and if he prays sitting, pray sitting altogether, and straighten the rows for the prayer, as the straightening of the rows is amongst those things which make your prayer a correct and perfect one. Hadith 117 Narrated Anas bin Malik, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Straighten your rows, as the straightening of rows is essential for a perfect and correct prayer. Hadith 118 Narrated Anas bin Malik, I arrived at Medina and was asked whether I found any change since the days of Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him. I said, I have not found any change, except that you do not stand in alignment in your prayers. Hadith 119 Narrated Anas bin Malik, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Straighten your rows for I see you from behind my back. Anas added, Every one of us used to put his shoulder with the shoulder of his companion and his foot with the foot of his companion. Hadith 120 Narrated Ibn Abbas, I prayed with the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, one night and stood on his left side. Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, caught hold of my head from behind and drew me to his right, and then offered the prayer and slept. Later the Mu'addin came and the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, stood up for prayer without performing ablution. Hadith 121 Narrated Anas bin Malik, one night an orphan and I offered the prayers behind the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, in my house and my mother, Umm Sulaim, was standing behind us, by herself forming a row. Hadith 122 Narrated Ibn Abbas, One night I stood to the left of the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, 
in the prayer but he caught hold of me by the hand or by the shoulder, arm, till he made me stand on his right and beckoned with his hand, for me, to go from behind, him. Hadith 123 Narrated Aisha, Allah's messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, used to pray in his room at night. As the wall of the room was low, the people saw him and some of them stood up to follow him in the prayer. In the morning they spread the news. The following night the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, stood for the prayer and the people followed him. This went on for two or three nights. Thereupon Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, did not stand for the prayer the following night, and did not come out. In the morning, the people asked him about it. He replied that he was afraid that the night prayer might become compulsory. Hadith 124 Narrated Aisha, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, had a mat which he used to spread during the day and use as a curtain at night. So a number of people gathered at night facing it and prayed behind him. Hadith 125 Narrated Zaid bin Thabit, Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, made a small room in the month of Ramadan, Said said, I think that Zaid bin Thabit said that it was made of a mat, and he prayed there for a few nights, and so some of his companions prayed behind him. When he came to know about it, he kept on sitting. In the morning, he went out to them and said, I have seen and understood what you did. You should pray in your houses, for the best prayer of a person is that which he prays in his house except the compulsory prayers. Hadith 126 Narrated Anas bin Malik ul Ansari, Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, rode a horse and fell down, and the right side of his body was injured. On that day he prayed one of the prayers sitting and we also prayed behind him sitting. When the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, finished the prayer with Taslim, he said, the Imam is to be followed, and if he prays standing then pray standing, and bow when he bows, and raise your heads when he raises his head, prostrate when he prostrates, and if he says, Samia Allahu liman hamada, you should say, Rabbana wa Hamd. Hadith 127 Narrated Anas bin Malik, Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, fell from a horse and got injured so he led the prayer sitting and we also prayed sitting. When he completed the prayer he said, the Imam is to be followed, if he says takbir then say takbir, bow if he bows, raise your heads when he raises his head, when he says, what means, Allah heard those who sent praises to him, say, what means, O our Lord. All the praises are for you, and prostrate when he prostrates. Hadith 128 Narrated Abu Huraira, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, the Imam is to be followed. Say the takbir when he says it, bow if he bows, if he says, what means, Allah heard those who sent praises to him, say, what means, O our Lord. All the praises are for you, prostrate if he prostrates, and pray sitting altogether if he prays sitting. Hadith 129 Narrated Salam bin Abdullah, my father said, Allah's messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, used to raise both his hands up to the level of his shoulders when opening the prayer, and on saying the takbir for bowing. And on raising his head from bowing he used to do the same, and then say, What means, Allah heard those who sent praises to him. O oh our Lord! All the praises are for you. And he did not do that, that is, raising his hands, in prostrations. Hadith 130 Narrated Abdullah bin Umar, I saw that whenever Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, stood for the prayer, he used to raise both his hands up to the shoulders, and used to do the same on saying the takbir for bowing and on raising his head from it, and used to say, What means, Allah heard those who sent praises to him. But he did not do that, that is, raising his hands, in prostrations. Hadith 131 Narrated Abu Kilaba, I saw Malik bin Huwairith saying takbir and raising both his hands, on starting the prayers, and raising his hands on bowing and also on raising his head after bowing. Malik bin Huwairith said, Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, did the same. 
Hadith 132 Narrated Abdullah bin Umar, I saw Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, opening the prayer with the takbir and raising his hands to the level of his shoulders at the time of saying the takbir, and on saying the takbir for bowing he did the same, and when he said, What means, Allah heard those who sent praises to him, he did the same, and then said, What means, O our Lord? All the praises are for you. But he did not do the same on prostrating and on lifting the head from it. Hadith 133 Narrated Nafi, whenever Ibn Umar started the prayer with takbir, he used to raise his hands, whenever he bowed, he used to raise his hands, before bowing, and also used to raise his hands on saying, what means, Allah heard those who sent praises to him, and he used to do the same on rising from the second rakah, for the third rakah. Ibn Umar said, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, used to do the same. Hadith 134 Narrated Sahal bin Sa'ad, the people were ordered to place the right hand on the left forearm in the prayer. Abu Hazm said, I knew that the order was from the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him. Hadith 135 Narrated Abu Huraira, Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, said, You see me facing the Qibla, but, by Allah, Nothing is hidden from me regarding your bowing and submissiveness and I see you from behind my back. Hadith 136 Narrated Anas bin Malik, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Perform the bowing and the prostrations properly. By Allah, I see you from behind me, or from behind my back, when you bow or prostrate. Hadith 137 Narrated Anas bin Malik the Prophet, Abu Bakr and Umar used to start the prayer with, All praise is but to Allah, Lord of the Worlds. Hadith 138 Narrated Abu Huraira, Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, used to keep silent between the takbir and the recitation of Quran, and that interval of silence used to be a short one. I said to the Prophet, Peace and blessings be upon him, may my parents be sacrificed for you. What do you say in the pause between takbir and recitation? The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, I say, what means, O Allah? Set me apart from my sins, faults, as the east and west are set apart from each other, and clean me from sins as a white garment is cleaned of dirt, after thorough washing. O Allah! Wash off my sins with water, snow, and hail. Hadith 139 Narrated Usma bint Abi Bakr, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, once offered the eclipse prayer. He stood for a long time and then did a prolonged bowing. He stood up straight again and kept on standing for a long time, then bowed a long bowing, and then stood up straight, and then prostrated a prolonged prostration, and then lifted his head and prostrated a prolonged prostration. And then he stood up for a long time, and then did a prolonged bowing, and then stood up straight again and kept on standing for a long time. Then he bowed a long bowing, and then stood up straight, and then prostrated a prolonged prostration, and then lifted his head and went for a prolonged prostration. On completion of the prayer, he said, Paradise became so near to me that, if I had dared, I would have plucked one of its bunches for you, and hell became so near to me that I said, O oh my Lord, will I be among those people? Then suddenly I saw a woman, and a cat was lacerating her with its claws. On inquiring, it was said that the woman had imprisoned the cat till it died of starvation, and she neither fed it, nor freed it so that it could feed itself. Hadith 140 Narrated Abu Ma'mar, we asked Kubbab whether Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, used to recite, the Quran, in the Zuhr and the Usr prayers. He replied in the affirmative. We said, How did you come to know about it? He said, By the movement of his beard. Hadith 141 Narrated al Bara, and al Bara was not a liar, whenever we offered prayer with the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, and he raised his head from the bowing, we used to remain standing till we saw him prostrating. Hadith 142 Narrated Abdullah bin Abbas 
Once solar eclipse occurred during the lifetime of Ola's messenger, peace and blessings be upon him. He offered the eclipse prayer. His companions asked, O Ola's messenger, peace and blessings be upon him. We saw you trying to take something while standing at your place, and then we saw you retreating. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, I was shown paradise and wanted to have a bunch of fruit from it. Had I taken it, you would have eaten from it as long as the world remains. Hadith 143 Narrated Anas bin Malik, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, led us in prayer and then went up to the pulpit and beckoned with both hands towards the Qibla of the mosque and then said, When I started leading you in prayer, I saw the display of paradise and hell on the wall of the mosque, facing the Qibla. I never saw good and bad as I have seen today. He repeated the last statement thrice. Hadith 144 Narrated Anas bin Malik, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, What is wrong with those people who look towards the sky during the prayer? His talk grew stern while delivering this speech and he said, They should stop, looking towards the sky during the prayer, otherwise their eyesight would be taken away. Hadith 145 Narrated Aisha, I asked Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, about looking hither and thither in prayer. He replied, It is a way of stealing by which Satan takes away, a portion, from the prayer of a person. Hadith 146 Narrated Aisha, Once the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, prayed on a kamisa with marks on it and said, The marks on it diverted my attention, take this kamisa to Abu Jaham and bring an inbijaniya from him. Hadith 147 Narrated Ibn Umar, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, saw expectoration in the direction of the Qibla of the mosque while he was leading the prayer, and scratched it off. After finishing the prayer, he said, Whenever any of you is in prayer, he should know that Allah is in front of him. So none should spit in front of him in the prayer. Hadith 148 Narrated on us, while the Muslims were offering the Fajr prayer, Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, suddenly appeared before them by lifting the curtain of the dwelling place of Aisha, looked towards the Muslims who were standing in rows. He smiled with pleasure. Abu Bakr started retreating to join the row on the assumption that the Prophet wanted to come out for the prayer. The Muslims intended to leave the prayer, and were on the verge of being put to trial, but the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, beckoned them to complete their prayer, and then he let the curtain fall. He died in the last hours of that day. Hadith 149 Narrated Jabir bin Samara, the people of Kufa complained against Sa'ad to Umar, and the latter dismissed him and appointed Ammar as their chief. They lodged many complaints against Sa'ad, and even they alleged that he did not pray properly. Umar sent for him and said, O oh, Abba Ishaq! These people claim that you do not pray properly. Abu Ishaq said, By Allah, I used to pray with them a prayer similar to that of Allah's apostle, and I never reduced anything of it. I used to prolong the first two rakat of Isha prayer and shorten the last two rakat. Umar said, O oh, Abba Ishaq, this was what I thought about you. And then he sent one or more persons with him to Kufa so as to ask the people about him. So they went there and did not leave any mosque without asking about him. All the people praised him till they came to the mosque of the tribe of Bunny Ups, one of the men called Usama bin Qatada with a surname of Abba Sa'da stood up and said, As you have put us under an oath, I am bound to tell you that Sa'd never went himself with the army and never distributed, the war booty, equally and never did justice in legal verdicts. On hearing it, Sa'ad said, I pray to Allah for three things, O Allah. If this slave of yours is a liar and got up for showing off, give him a long life, increase his poverty and put him to trials. And so it happened. Later on when that person was asked how he was, he used to reply that he was an old man in trial as the result of Sa'ad's curse. Abdul Mulik, the sub-narrator, said that he had seen him afterwards and his eyebrows were overhanging his eyes owing to old age, and he used to tease and assault the small girls in the way. Hadith 150 
Narrated Ubadah bin as samad Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Whoever does not recite Al-Fatiha in his prayer, his prayer is invalid. Hadith 151 Narrated Abu Huraira, Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, entered the mosque and a person followed him. The man prayed and went to the Prophet and greeted him. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, returned the greeting and said to him, Go back and pray, for you have not prayed. The man went back, prayed in the same way as before, returned and greeted the Prophet, who said, Go back and pray, for you have not prayed. This happened thrice. The man said, By him who sent you with the truth, I cannot offer the prayer in a better way than this. Please, teach me how to pray. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, When you stand for prayer, say takbir and then recite from the Holy Quran, of what you know by heart, and then bow till you feel at ease. Then raise your head and stand up straight, then prostrate till you feel at ease during your prostration, then sit with calmness till you feel at ease, do not hurry, and do the same in all your prayers. Hadith 152 Narrated Jabir bin Samara, Sa'ad said, I used to pray with them a prayer similar to that of Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, the prayer of Zuhr and Usr, reducing nothing from them. I used to prolong the first two rakat and shorten the last two rakat. Umar said to Sa'ad, This was what we thought about you. Hadith 153 Narrated Abdullah bin Abi Qatada, My father said, The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, in Zuhr prayers used to recite Al-Fatiha along with two other surahs in the first two rakat, a long one in the first rakah and a shorter, surah, in the second, and at times the verses were audible. In the Usr prayer the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, used to recite Al-Fatiha and two more surahs in the first two rakat and used to prolong the first rakah. And he used to prolong the first rakah of the Fajr prayer and shorten the second. Hadith 154 Narrated Abu Mamar, I asked Kabbab whether the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, used to recite the Qur'an in the Zuhr and the Usr prayers. He replied in the affirmative. We said, how did you come to know that? He said, from the movement of his beard. Hadith 155 Narrated Abu Mamar, I asked Kabbab bin al arat whether the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, used to recite the Qur'an in the Zuhr and the Usr prayers. He replied in the affirmative. I said, how did you come to know that? He replied, from the movement of his beard. Hadith 156 Narrated Abdullah bin Abi Qatada, my father said, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, used to recite Al-Fatiha along with another surah in the first two rakat of the Zuhr and the Usr prayers, and at times a verse or so was audible to us. Hadith 157 Narrated Ibn Abbas, my mother, Umm al-Fadl heard me reciting Surah Al-Mursalat, Surah 77, and said, O my son! By Allah, your recitation made me remember that it was the last surah I heard from Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him. He recited it in the Maghrib prayer. Hadith 158 Narrated Marwan bin al-Hakam, Zaid bin Thabit said to me, Why do you recite very short surahs in the Maghrib prayer, while I heard the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, reciting the longer of the two long surahs? Hadith 159 Narrated Jubayr bin Mudim, my father said, I heard Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, reciting Surah At-Tur, Surah 52, in the Maghrib prayer. Hadith 160 Narrated Abu Rafi, I offered the Isha'a prayer behind Abu Huraira, and he recited Surah al Shikak, Surah 84, and prostrated. On my inquiring, he said, I prostrated behind Abu Qasim, the Prophet, when he recited that Surah, and I will go on doing it till I meet him. Hadith 161 Narrated Al-Bara, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, was on a journey, and recited in one of the first two rakat of the Isha prayer Surah At-Teen. Hadith 162 
Narrated Abu Rafi, once I prayed the Isha prayer with Abu Huraira, and he recited Surah al Shikak, Surah 84, and prostrated. I said, What is that? He said, I prostrated behind Abul Qasim, the Prophet, when he recited that surah, and I will go on doing it till I meet him. Hadith 163 Narrated al bara I heard the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, reciting Surah At-Teen, Surah 95, in the Isha prayer, and I never heard a sweeter voice or a better way of recitation than that of the Prophet. Hadith 164 Narrated Jabir bin Samara, Umar said to Sa'ad, the people complained against you in everything, even in prayer. Sa'ad replied, Really, I used to prolong the first two rakat and shorten the last two, and I will never shorten the prayer in which I follow Allah's messenger, peace and blessings be upon him. Umar said, You are telling the truth, and that is what I think about you. Hadith 165 Narrated Sa'iyar bin Salama. My father and I went to Abu Barzah al aslami to ask him about the stated times for the prayers. He replied, The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, used to offer the Zuhr prayer when the sun just declined from its highest position at noon, the Usr at a time when if a man went to the farthest place in Medina, after praying, he would find the sun still hot, bright. The sub-narrator said, I have forgotten what Abu Barzah said about the Maghrib prayer. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, never found any harm in delaying the Isha prayer to the first third of the night, and he never liked to sleep before it and to talk after it. He used to offer the morning prayer at a time, when after finishing it, one could recognize the person sitting beside him, and used to recite between sixty to one hundred verses in one or both the rakat. Hadith 166 Narrated Abu Huraira the Qur'an is recited in every prayer, and in those prayers in which Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, recited aloud for us, we recite aloud in the same prayers for you, and the prayers in which the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, recited quietly, we recite quietly. If you recite Al-Fatiha only, it is sufficient, but if you recite something else in addition, it is better. Hadith 167 Narrated Ibn Abbas, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, set out with the intention of going to Sukukaz, market of Ukaz, along with some of his companions. At the same time, a barrier was put between the devils and the news of heaven. Fire commenced to be thrown at them. The devils went to their people, who asked them, What is wrong with you? They said, A barrier has been placed between us and the news of heaven and fire has been thrown at us. They said, The thing which has put a barrier between you and the news of heaven must be something which has happened recently. Go eastward and westward and see what has put a barrier between you and the news of heaven. Those who went towards Tihama came across the Prophet at a place called Nukla, and it was on the way to Sukukaz, and the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, was offering the Fajr prayer with his companions. When they heard the Qur'an they listened to it and said, By Allah, this is the thing which has put a barrier between us and the news of heaven. They went to their people and said, O our people, verily we have heard a wonderful recital, Qur'an, which shows the true path, we believed in it and would not ascribe partners to our Lord. Allah revealed the following verses to his Prophet, Surah Jinn, Surah 72, say, It has been revealed to me. And what was revealed to him was the conversation of the jinns. Hadith 168 Narrated Ibn Abbas, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, recited aloud in the prayers in which he was ordered to do so, and quietly in the prayers in which he was ordered to do so. And your Lord is not forgetful. Verily there was a good example for you in the ways of the Prophet. Hadith 169 Anna said, One of the Ansar used to lead the Ansar in Salat in the Kaaba Mosque, and it was his habit to recite Surah al ikhlas whenever he wanted to recite something in Salat. When he finished that Surah, he would recite another one with it. He followed the same procedure in each Rakah. His companions discussed this with him and said, You recite this Surah and do not consider it sufficient and then you recite another. 
so would you recite it alone or leave it and recite some other? He said, I will never leave it, and if you want me to be your imam on this condition then it is all right, otherwise I will leave you. They knew that he was the best amongst them, and they did not like someone else to lead them in Salat. When the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, went to them as usual, they informed him about it. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, addressed him and said, O oh, so and so, what forbids you from doing what your companions ask you to do? Why do you read this surah particularly in every rakah? He replied, I love this surah. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Your love for this surah will make you enter paradise. Hadith 170 Narrated Abu Wail, a man came to Ibn Masud and said, I recited the Mufassal, surahs, at night in one rakah. Ibn Masud said, This recitation is, too quick, like the recitation of poetry. I know the identical surahs which the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, used to recite in pairs. Ibn Masud then mentioned twenty Mufassal surahs including two surahs from the family of, that is, those verses which begin with, ha, mim, which the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, used to recite, in each rakah. Hadith 171 Narrated Abdullah bin Abi Qatada, my father said, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, used to recite Al-Fatiha followed by another surah in the first two rakat of the prayer, and used to recite only Al-Fatiha in the last two rakat of the Zuhr prayer. Sometimes a verse or so was audible, and he used to prolong the first rakah more than the second, and used to do the same in the Usr and Fajr prayers. Hadith 172 Narrated Abu Ma'mar, we said to Kabbab, did Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, used to recite in Zuhr and Usr prayers? He replied in the affirmative. We said, how did you come to know about it? He said, by the movement of his beard. Hadith 173 Narrated Abdullah bin Abi Qatada, my father said, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, used to recite Al-Fatiha along with another surah in the first two rakat of the Zuhr and Usr prayers. A verse or so was audible at times, and he used to prolong the first rakah. Hadith 174 Narrated Abdullah bin Abi Qatada, my father said, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, used to prolong the first rakah of the Zuhr prayer and shorten the second one, and used to do the same in the Fajr prayer. Hadith 175 Narrated Abu Huraira, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Say Amin when the Imam says it, and if the Amin of any one of you coincides with that of the angels, then all his past sins will be forgiven. Ibn Shihab said, Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, used to say Amin. Hadith 176 Narrated Abu Huraira, Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, said, If any one of you says, Amin, and the angels in the heaven say, Amin, and the former coincides with the latter, all his past sins will be forgiven. Hadith 177 Narrated Abu Huraira, Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Say Amin when the Imam says, What means, not the path of those who earn your anger, such as Jews, nor of those who go astray, such as Christians, all the past sins of the person whose saying of Amin coincides with that of the angels, will be forgiven. Hadith 178 Narrated Abu Bakra, I reached the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, in the mosque while he was bowing in prayer, and I too bowed before joining the row. I mentioned it to the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, and he said to me, May Allah increase your love for the good. But do not repeat it again, bowing in that way. Hadith 179 Narrated Imran bin Husayn, I offered the prayer with Ali in Basra, and he made us remember the prayer which we used to pray with Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him. Ali said takbir on each rising and bowing. Hadith 180 Narrated Abu Salama, when Abu Hurairah led us in prayer, he used to say takbir on each bowing and rising. 
On the completion of the prayer he used to say, My prayer is more similar to the prayer of Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, than that of any one of you. Hadith 181 Narrated Mutarif bin Abdullah, Imran bin Husayn and I offered the prayer behind Ali bin Abi Talib. When Ali prostrated, he said the takbir, when he raised his head, he said the takbir and when he got up for the third rakah he said the takbir. On completion of the prayer Imran took my hand and said, This, that is, Ali, made me remember the prayer of Muhammad, or he said, He led us in a prayer like that of Muhammad. Hadith 182 Narrated Ikramah, I saw a person praying at Maqam Ibrahim, the place of Abraham by the Kaaba, and he was saying takbir on every bowing, rising, standing and sitting. I asked Ibn Abbas, about this prayer. He admonished me saying, Isn't that the prayer of the Prophet? Hadith 183 Narrated Ikramah, I prayed behind a shaykh at Makkah and he said twenty-two takbirs, during the prayer. I told Ibn Abbas that he, that is, that shaykh, was foolish. Ibn Abbas admonished me and said, This is the tradition of Abul Qasim. Hadith 184 And narrated Abu Huraira, Whenever Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, stood for the prayer, he said takbir on starting the prayer and then on bowing. On rising from bowing he said, Samia Allahuli Manhamada, and then while standing straight he used to say, Rabbana lakul hamd. Al-Laithi said, The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Wa lakul hamd. He used to say takbir on prostrating and on raising his head from prostration, again he would say takbir on prostrating and raising his head. He would then do the same in the whole of the prayer till it was completed. On rising from the second rakah, after sitting for a tahiyat, he used to say takbir. Hadith 185 Narrated Musab bin Sa'ad, I offered prayer beside my father and approximated both my hands and placed them in between the knees. My father told me not to do so and said, We used to do the same but we were forbidden, by the Prophet, to do it, and were ordered to place the hands on the knees. Hadith 186 Narrated Zaid bin Wahhab, Hudayfa saw a person who was not performing the bowing and prostration perfectly. He said to him, You have not prayed, and if you should die you would die on a religion other than that of Muhammad. Hadith 187 Narrated al bara the bowing, the prostration, the sitting in between the two prostrations and the standing after the bowing of the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, but not Qiyam, standing in the prayer, and Qud, sitting in the prayer, used to be approximately equal, in duration. Hadith 188 Narrated Abu Huraira, once the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, entered the mosque, a man came in, offered the prayer and greeted the Prophet. The Prophet returned his greeting and said to him, Go back and pray again for you have not prayed. The man offered the prayer again, came back and greeted the Prophet. He said to him thrice, Go back and pray again for you have not prayed. The man said, By him who has sent you with the truth. I do not know a better way of praying. Kindly teach me how to pray. He said, When you stand for the prayer, Say takbir and then recite from the Qur'an what you know, and then bow with calmness till you feel at ease, then rise from bowing till you stand straight. Afterwards prostrate calmly till you feel at ease and then raise, your head, and sit with calmness till you feel at ease, and then prostrate with calmness till you feel at ease in prostration, and do the same in the whole of your prayer. Hadith 189 Narrated Aisha, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, used to say in his bowing and prostrations, what means, exalted, from unbecoming attributes, are you O Allah our Lord, and by your praise, do I exalt you. O Allah! Forgive me! Hadith 190 Narrated Abu Huraira, when the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Samia Allahu liman hamada, Allah heard those who sent praises to him, he would say, Rabbana wa lakul hamd. On bowing and raising his head from it the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, used to say takbir. 
he also used to say takbir on rising after the two prostrations. Hadith 191 Narrated Abu Huraira, Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, said, when the Imam says, Samia Allahu liman hamada, you should say, Allahumma rabban alakul hamd. And if the saying of any one of you coincides with that of the angels, all his past sins will be forgiven. Hadith 192 Narrated Abu Salama, Abu Huraira said, No doubt, my salat is similar to that of the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him. Abu Huraira used to recite Kanut after saying, Samia Allahu li Manhamada, in the last rakah of the Zuhr, Isha and Fajr prayers. He would ask Allah's forgiveness for the true believers and curse the disbelievers. Hadith 193 Narrated on us, the Kanut, supplication before going down for prostration, used to be recited in the Maghrib and the Fajr prayers. Hadith 194 Narrated Rafa' bin Rafi az Zuraki, one day we were praying behind the Prophet. When he raised his head from bowing, he said, Samia Allahu li Manhamadah. A man behind him said, What means, O our Lord? All the praises are for you, many good and blessed praises. When the Prophet completed the prayer, he asked, Who has said these words? The man replied, I. The Prophet said, I saw over thirty angels competing to write it first. The Prophet rose, from bowing, and stood straight till all the vertebrae of his spinal column came to a natural position. Hadith 195 Narrated Thabit, Anas used to demonstrate to us the prayer of the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, and while demonstrating, he used to raise his head from bowing and stand so long that we would say that he had forgotten, the prostration. Hadith 196 Narrated Al-Bara, the bowing, the prostrations, the period of standing after bowing and the interval between the two prostrations of the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, used to be equal in duration. Hadith 197 Narrated Ayyub, Abu Kilaba said, Malik bin Huwairith used to demonstrate to us the prayer of the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, at times other than that of the compulsory prayers. So, once, he stood up for prayer and performed a perfect qiyam, standing and reciting from the Holy Quran, and then bowed and performed bowing perfectly, then he raised his head and stood straight for a while. Abu Kilaba added, Malik bin Huwairith, in that demonstration, prayed like this sheikh of ours, Abu Yazid. Abu Yazid used to sit, for a while, on raising his head from the second prostration before getting up. Hadith 198 Narrated Abu Bakr bin Abdur Rahman ibn Harith bin Hisham and Abu Salamah bin Abdur Rahman, Abu Huraira used to say takbir in all the prayers, compulsory and optional in the month of Ramadan or other months. He used to say takbir on standing for prayer and on bowing, then he would say, Samia Allahu li Manhamada, and before prostrating he would say, Rabbana wa lakul hamd. Then he would say takbir on prostrating and on raising his head from the prostration, then another takbir on prostrating, for the second time, and on raising his head from the prostration. He also would say the takbir on standing from the second rakah. He used to do the same in every rakah till he completed the prayer. On completion of the prayer, he would say, by him in whose hands my soul is. No doubt my prayer is closer to that of Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, than yours, and this was his prayer till he left this world. Hadith 199 And Abu Huraira said, when Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, raised his head from, bowing, he used to say, Samia Allahu li Manhamada, Rabbana wa lakul hamd. He would invoke Allah for some people by naming them, O Allah. Save Al Walid bin Al Walid and Salamah bin Hisham and Ayyash bin Abi Rabiah, and the weak and the helpless people among the faithful believers. O Allah! Be hard on the tribe of Madar, and let them suffer from famine years like that of the time of Joseph. In those days, the eastern section of the tribe of Madar was against the Prophet. Hadith 200 Narrated Anas bin Malik, 
Olah's messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, fell from a horse and the right side of his body was injured. We went to inquire about his health. Meanwhile it was time for the prayer, and he led the prayer sitting and we also prayed while sitting. On completion of the prayer he said, The imam is to be followed, say takbir when he says it, bow when he bows, rise when he rises and when he says, Samia Allahu liman hamadah, say, Rabbana wallakul hamd, and prostrate if he prostrates. Sufyan narrated the same from Ma'amar. Ibn Juraj said that his, the Prophet's, right leg had been injured. Hadith 201 Narrated Abu Huraira, the people said, O Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him. Shall we see our Lord on the day of resurrection? He replied, Do you have any doubt in seeing the full moon on a clear, not cloudy, night? They replied, No, O Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him. He said, Do you have any doubt in seeing the sun when there are no clouds? They replied in the negative. He said, You will see Allah, your Lord, in the same way. On the day of resurrection, people will be gathered and he will order the people to follow what they used to worship. So some of them will follow the sun, some will follow the moon, and some will follow other deities, and only this nation, Muslims, will be left with its hypocrites. Allah will come to them and say, I am your Lord. They will say, We shall stay in this place till our Lord comes to us, and when our Lord will come, we will recognize him. Then Allah will come to them again and say, I am your Lord. They will say, You are our Lord. Allah will call them, and us Sirat, a bridge, will be laid across hell and I, Muhammad, shall be the first amongst the apostles to cross it with my followers. Nobody except the apostles will then be able to speak and they will be saying then, O Allah! Save us! O Allah save us! There will be hooks like the thorns of Sa'adan in hell. Have you seen the thorns of Sa'adan? The people said, Yes. He said, These hooks will be like the thorns of Sa'adan, but nobody except Allah knows their greatness in size, and these will entangle the people according to their deeds, some of them will fall and stay in hell forever, others will receive punishment, torn into small pieces, and will get out of hell, till when Allah intends mercy on whomever he likes amongst the people of hell, he will order the angels to take out of hell those who worship none but him alone. The angels will take them out by recognizing them from the traces of prostrations, for Allah has forbidden the hellfire to eat away those traces. So they will come out of the fire, it will eat away from the whole of the human body except the marks of the prostrations. At that time they will come out of the fire as mere skeletons. The water of life will be poured on them, and as a result, they will grow like the seeds growing on the bank of flowing water. Then, when Allah had finished from the judgments amongst his creations, one man will be left between hell and paradise, and he will be the last man from the people of hell to enter paradise. He will be facing hell, and will say, O Allah! Turn my face from the fire, as its wind has dried me and its steam has burnt me. Allah will ask him, Will you ask for anything more in case this favor is granted to you? He will say, No, by your, honor, power. And he will give to his Lord, Allah, what he will of the pledges and the covenants. Allah will then turn his face from the fire. When he will face paradise and will see its charm, he will remain quiet as long as Allah wills. He then will say, O my Lord! Let me go to the gate of paradise. Allah will ask him, Didn't you give pledges and make covenants, to the effect, that you would not ask for anything more than what you requested at first? He will say, O my Lord! Do not make me the most wretched amongst your creatures. Allah will say, if this request is granted, will you then ask for anything else? He will say, No. By your power. I shall not ask for anything else. Then he will give to his Lord what he wills of the pledges and the covenants. Allah will then let him go to the gate of paradise. On reaching them and seeing its life, charm, and pleasure, he will remain quiet as long as Allah wills, and then will say, O my Lord. 
let me enter paradise. Allah will say, May Allah be merciful unto you, O son of Adam. How treacherous you are! Haven't you made covenants and given pledges that you will not ask for anything more than what you have been given? He will say, O my Lord! Do not make me the most wretched amongst your creatures. So Allah will laugh and allow him to enter paradise, and will ask him to request as much as he likes. He will do so, till all his desires have been fulfilled. Then Allah will say, Request more of such and such things. Allah will remind him, and when all his desires and wishes have been fulfilled, Allah will say, All this is granted to you and a similar amount besides. Abu Sa'id al Qudri said to Abu Hurairah, Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Allah said, that is for you, and ten times more like it. Abu Hurairah said, I do not remember from Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, except, his saying, all this is granted to you, and a similar amount besides. Abu Sa'id said, I heard him saying, that is for you and ten times more the like of it. Hadith 202 Narrated Abdullah bin Malik bin Buhayna, whenever the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, used to offer prayer, he used to keep arms away, from the body, so that the whiteness of his armpits was visible. Hadith 203 Narrated Abu Wail, Hudayfa said, I saw a person not performing his bowing and prostrations perfectly. When he completed the prayer, I told him that he had not prayed. I think that Hudayfa added, that is, said to the man, had you died, you would have died on a tradition other than that of the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. Hadith 204 Narrated Ibn Abbas, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, was ordered, by Allah, to prostrate on seven parts, and not to tuck up the clothes or hair, while praying. Those parts are, the forehead, along with the tip of nose, both hands, both knees, and, toes of, both feet. Hadith 205 Narrated Ibn Abbas, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, We have been ordered to prostrate on seven bones, and not to tuck up the clothes or hair. Hadith 206 Narrated Al-Bara bin Azib, he was not a liar, we used to pray behind the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, and when he said, Samia Allahu li Muhammadah, none of us would bend his back, to go for prostration, till the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, had placed his forehead on the ground. Hadith 207 Narrated Ibn Abbas, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, I have been ordered to prostrate on seven bones, that is, on the forehead along with the tip of the nose, and the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, pointed towards his nose, both hands, both knees, and the toes of both feet, and not to gather the clothes or the hair. Hadith 208 Narrated Abu Salama, Once I went to Abu Sa'id al-Qudri and asked him, Won't you come with us to the date palm trees to have a talk? So Abu Sa'id went out and I asked him, Tell me what you heard from the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, about the night of Qadr. Abu Sa'id replied, Once Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, performed Yetikaf, seclusion, on the first ten days of the month of Ramadan, and we did the same with him. Gabriel came to him and said, The night you are looking for is ahead of you. So the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, performed the Yetikaf in the middle, second, ten days of the month of Ramadan, and we too performed Yetikaf with him. Gabriel came to him and said, The night which you are looking for is ahead of you. In the morning of the twentieth of Ramadan, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, delivered a sermon saying, Whoever has performed Yetikaf with me should continue it. I have been shown the night of Qadr, but have forgotten its date, but it is in the odd nights of the last ten nights. I saw in my dream that I was prostrating in mud and water. In those days the roof of the mosque was made of branches of date palm trees. At that time, the sky was clear and no cloud was visible, but suddenly a cloud came and it rained. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, led us in the prayer, and I saw the traces of mud on the forehead and on the nose of Allah's Messenger, 
peace and blessings be upon him. So it was the confirmation of that dream. Hadith 209 Narrated Sahil bin Sa'ad, the people used to pray with the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, tying their azars around their necks because of their small sizes, and the women were directed that they should not raise their heads from the prostrations till the men had sat straight. Hadith 210 Narrated Ibn Abbas, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, was ordered to prostrate on seven bony parts, and not to tuck up his clothes or hair. Hadith 211 Narrated Ibn Abbas, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, I have been ordered to prostrate on seven, bones, and not to tuck up the hair or garment. Hadith 212 Narrated Aisha, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, used to say frequently in his bowing and prostrations, what means, exalted, from unbecoming attributes, are you O Allah our Lord, and by your praise, do I exalt you. O Allah! Forgive me! In this way, he was acting on what was explained to him in the Holy Quran. Hadith 213 Narrated Abu Kilabah once Malik bin Huwairith said to his friends, Shall I show you how Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, used to offer his prayers? And it was not the time for any of the compulsory congregational prayers. So he stood up, for the prayer, bowed and said the takbir, then he raised his head and remained standing for a while, and then prostrated and raised his head for a while, sat up for a while. He prayed like our Sheikh Amr ibn Salamah. Ayyub said, the latter used to do a thing which I did not see the people doing, that is, he used to sit between the third and the fourth rakah. Malik bin Huwairith said, we came to the Prophet, after embracing Islam, and stayed with him. He said to us, when you go back to your families, pray such and such a prayer at such and such a time, pray such and such a prayer at such and such a time, and when there is the time for the prayer, then only one of you should pronounce the Adhan for the prayer and the oldest of you should lead the prayer. Hadith 214 Narrated al bara the time taken by the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, in prostrations, bowing, and the sitting interval between the two prostrations was about the same. Hadith 215 Narrated Thabit, Anna said, I will leave no stone unturned in making you offer the prayer as I have seen the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, making us offer it. Anas used to do a thing which I have not seen you doing. He used to stand after the bowing for such a long time that one would think that he had forgotten, the prostrations, and he used to sit in between the prostrations so long that one would think that he had forgotten the second prostration. Hadith 216 Narrated Anas bin Malik, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Be straight in the prostrations, and none of you should put his forearms on the ground, in the prostration, like a dog. Hadith 217 Narrated Malik bin Huwairith al laythi I saw the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, praying and in the odd rakat, he used to sit for a moment before getting up. Hadith 218 Narrated Ayyub, Abu Kilabah said, Malik bin Huwairith came to us and led us in the prayer in this mosque of ours and said, I lead you in prayer, but I do not want to offer the prayer, but just to show you how Allah's Apostle performed his prayers. I asked Abu Kilabah, how was the prayer of Malik bin Huwairith? He replied, like the prayer of this sheikh of ours, that is, Umar bin Salamah. That sheikh used to pronounce the takbir perfectly and when he raised his head from the second prostration he would sit for a while and then support himself on the ground and get up. Hadith 219 Narrated Sa'id bin al-Harith, Abu Sa'id led us in the prayer and said the takbir aloud on arising from the prostration, and on prostrating, on rising again, and on getting up from the second rakah. Abu Sa'id said, I saw the Prophet doing the same. Hadith 220 Narrated Mutarif, Imran and I prayed behind Ali bin Abi Talib, and he said takbir on prostrating, on rising and on getting up after the two rakat, that is, after the second rakah. When the prayer was finished, Imran took me by the hand and said, He, Ali, has prayed the prayer of Muhammad, 
or said, He made us remember the prayer of Muhammad. Hadith 221 Narrated Abdullah bin Abdullah, I saw Abdullah bin Umar crossing his legs while sitting in the prayer and I, a mere youngster in those days, did the same. Ibn Umar forbade me to do so, and said, the proper way is to keep the right foot propped up and bend the left in the prayer. I said questioningly, but you are doing so, crossing the legs. He said, my feet cannot bear my weight. Hadith 222 Narrated Muhammad bin Umar bin Atta, I was sitting with some of the companions of Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, and we were discussing about the way of praying of the Prophet. Abu Humaida Sa'adi said, I remember the prayer of Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, better than any one of you. I saw him raising both his hands up to the level of the shoulders on saying the takbir, and on bowing, he placed his hands on both knees and bent his back straight, then he stood up straight from bowing till all the vertebrate took their normal positions. In prostrations, he placed both his hands on the ground with the forearms away from the ground and away from his body, and his toes were facing the Qibla. On sitting in the second rakah, he sat on his left foot and propped up the right one, and in the last rakah he pushed his left foot forward and kept the other foot propped up and sat over the buttocks. Hadith 223 Narrated Abdullah bin Buhayna, he was from the tribe of Uzd Shanua and was the ally of the tribe of Abdul Manaf, and was one of the companions of the Prophet, once the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, led us in the Zuhr prayer and stood up after the second rakah and did not sit down. The people stood up with him. When the prayer was about to end and the people were waiting for him to say the taslim, he said takbir while sitting and prostrated twice before saying the taslim, and then he said the taslim. Hadith 224 Narrated Abdullah bin Malik bin Buhayna, once Allah's messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, led us in the Zuhr prayer and got up, after the prostrations of the second rakah, although he should have sat, for the tashahud. So at the end of the prayer, he prostrated twice while sitting, prostrations of Sahu. Hadith 225 Narrated Shakik bin Salama, Abdullah said, Whenever we prayed behind the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, we used to recite, in sitting, peace be on Gabriel, Michael, peace be on so and so. Once Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, looked back at us and said, Allah himself is us salam, peace, and if any one of you prays then he should say, what means, all the compliments, prayers, and good things are due to Allah, peace be on you, O Prophet, and Allah's mercy and blessings, be on you. Peace be on us and on the pious subjects of Allah. If you say that, it will reach all the subjects in the heaven and the earth. I testify that there is no deity, worthy of worship, but Allah, and I testify that Muhammad is his slave and his apostle. Hadith 226 Narrated Aisha, the wife of the Prophet, Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, used to invoke Allah in the prayer saying, What means, O Allah, I seek refuge with you from the punishment of the grave, from the afflictions of the impostor Messiah, and from the afflictions of life and death. O Allah, I seek refuge with you from sins and from debt. Somebody said to him, Why do you so frequently seek refuge with Allah from being in debt? The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, replied, A person in debt tells lies whenever he speaks, and breaks promises whenever he makes them. Aisha also narrated, I heard Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, in his prayer seeking refuge with Allah from the afflictions of ad dajjal Hadith 227 Narrated Abu Bakr siddiq I asked Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, to teach me an invocation so that I may invoke Allah with it in my prayer. He told me to say, O Allah! I have done great injustice to myself and none except you forgive sins, so bestow on me a forgiveness from you, and have mercy on me, you are the forgiver, the merciful. Hadith 228 Narrated Abdullah, when we prayed with the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, we used to say, peace be on Allah from his slaves and peace be on so and so. The Prophet, 
peace and blessings be upon him, said, Don't say us salam be on Allah, for he himself is us salam, but say, what means, all the compliments, prayers, and good things are due to Allah, peace be on you, O Prophet, and Allah's mercy and blessings, be on you. Peace be on us and on the pious subjects of Allah. If you say this then it will reach all the slaves in heaven or between heaven and earth. I testify that there is no deity, worthy of worship, but Allah, and I testify that Muhammad is his slave and his apostle. Then select the invocation you like best and recite it. Hadith 229 Narrated Abu Sa'id al-Qudri, I saw Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, prostrating in mud and water, and saw the mark of mud on his forehead. Hadith 230 Narrated Um Salama, whenever Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, finished his prayers with Taslim, the women would get up and he would stay on for a while in his place before getting up. Ibn Shihab said, I think, and Allah knows better, that the purpose of his stay was that the women might leave before the men who had finished their prayer. Hadith 231 Narrated at Ban bin Malik, we prayed with the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, and used to finish our prayer with the Taslim along with him. Hadith 232 Narrated Mahmud bin ar Rabia, I remember Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, and also the mouthful of water which he took from a bucket in our house and ejected, on me. I heard from Itban bin Malik al Ansari, who was one from Bani Salim, saying, I used to lead my tribe of Bani Salim in prayer. Once I went to the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, and said to him, I have weak eyesight, and at times the rainwater flood intervenes between me and the mosque of my tribe, and I wish that you would come to my house and pray at some place, so that I could take that place as a place for praying, mosque. He said, Allah willing, I shall do that. Next day Allah's messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, along with Abu Bakr, came to my house after the sun had risen high and he asked permission to enter. I gave him permission, but he didn't sit till he said to me, where do you want me to pray in your house? I pointed to a place in the house where I wanted him to pray. So he stood up for the prayer and we aligned behind him. He completed the prayer with Taslim and we did the same simultaneously. Hadith 233 Narrated Abu Ma'abad, the freed slave of Ibn Abbas, Ibn Abbas told me, in the lifetime of the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, it was the custom to celebrate Allah's praises aloud after the compulsory congregational prayers. Ibn Abbas further said, When I heard the dhikr, I would learn that the compulsory congregational prayer had ended. Hadith 234 Narrated Ibn Abbas, I used to recognize the completion of the prayer of the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, by hearing takbir. Hadith 235 Narrated Abu Huraira, some poor people came to the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, and said, the wealthy people will get higher grades and will have permanent enjoyment and they pray like us and fast as we do. They have more money by which they perform the Hajj and Umrah, fight and struggle in Allah's cause and give in charity. The Prophet said, shall I not tell you a thing upon which if you acted, you would catch up with those who have surpassed you? Nobody would overtake you and you would be better than the people amongst whom you live, except those who would do the same. Say, Subhan Allah, Alhamdulillah, and Allahu Akbar, 33 times each after every, compulsory, prayer. We differed and some of us said that we should say, Subhan Allah, 33 times, and Alhamdulillah, 33 times, and Allahu Akbar, 34 times. I went to the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, who said, Say, Subhan Allah, and Alhamdulillah, and Allahu Akbar, all together, 33 times. Hadith 236 Narrated Warad, the clerk of Al Mugirah bin Shuaba, once Al Mugirah dictated to me in a letter addressed to Muawiyah that the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, used to say after every compulsory prayer, What means, there is no deity but Allah, alone, no partner to him. His is the kingdom and all praise, and omnipotent is he. O Allah! 
Nobody can hold back what you gave, nobody can give what you held back, and no struggler's effort can benefit against you. And Ul Hasan said, Ul Judd means prosperity. Hadith 237 Narrated Samara bin Jundub, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, used to face us on completion of the prayer. Hadith 238 Narrated Zaid bin Khalid ul Juhani, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, led us in the Fajr prayer at Hudaybiyah after a rainy night. On completion of the prayer, he faced the people and said, Do you know what your Lord has said, revealed? The people replied, Allah and his apostle know better. He said, Allah has said, In this morning some of my slaves remained as true believers and some became non-believers, whoever said that the rain was due to the blessings and the mercy of Allah had belief in me and he disbelieves in the stars, and whoever said that it rained because of a particular star had no belief in me, but believes in that star. Hadith 239 Narrated Anas bin Malik, once the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, delayed the Isha prayer until midnight and then came to us. Having prayed, he faced us and said, the people had prayed and slept, but you were in the prayer as long as you were waiting for it. Hadith 240 Narrated Nafi, Ibn Umar used to offer prayers, Nawafil, at the place where he had offered the compulsory prayer. Al Qasim bin Muhammad bin Abi Bakr did the same. The narration coming from Abu Huraira, from the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, forbidding the Imam from offering prayers, optional prayer, at the same place where he has offered the compulsory prayer is incorrect. Hadith 241 Narrated Um Salama, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, after finishing the prayer with Taslim, used to stay at his place for a while. Ibn Shihab said, I think, and Allah knows better, that he used to wait for the departure of the women who had prayed. Ibn Shihab wrote that he had heard it from Hind bint al Harith al Firasiyah from Umm Salama, the wife of the Prophet. Hind was from the companions of Umm Salama, who said, When the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, finished the prayer with Taslim, the women would depart and enter their houses before Allah's Apostle departed. Hadith 242 Narrated Ukba, I offered the Usr prayer behind the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, at Medina. When he had finished the prayer with Taslim, he got up hurriedly and went out by crossing the rows of the people to one of the dwellings of his wives. The people got scared at his speed. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, came back and found the people surprised at his haste, and said to them, I remembered a piece of gold lying in my house, and I did not like it to divert my attention from Allah's worship, so I have ordered it to be distributed, in charity. Hadith 243 Narrated Abdullah, You should not give away a part of your prayer to Satan by thinking that it is necessary to depart, after finishing the prayer, from one's right side only, I have seen the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, often leave from the left side. Hadith 244 Narrated Ibn Umar, during the holy battle of Khaybar, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Whoever ate from this plant, that is, garlic, should not enter our mosque. Hadith 245 Narrated Atta, I heard Jabir bin Abdullah saying, The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Whoever eats, from, this plant, he meant garlic, should keep away from our mosque. I said, What does he mean by that? He replied, I think he means only raw garlic. Hadith 246 Narrated Jabir bin Abdullah, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Whoever eats garlic or onion should keep away from our mosque, or should remain in his house. Jabir bin Abdullah, in another narration said, Once a big pot containing cooked vegetables was brought. On finding unpleasant smell coming from it, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, asked, what is in it? He was told all the names of the vegetables that were in it. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, ordered that it should be brought near to some of his companions who were with him. When the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, saw it, he disliked to eat it and said, eat. I don't eat, 
for I converse with those whom you don't converse with, that is, the angels. Hadith 247 Narrated Abdul Aziz, a man asked on us, What did you hear from the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, about garlic? He said, The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Whoever has eaten this plant should neither come near us nor pray with us. Hadith 248 Narrated Sulaiman Ash Shaybani, I heard Ash Shuabi saying, A person who was accompanying the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, passed by a grave that was separated from the other graves, told me that the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, once led the people in the funeral prayer and the people had aligned behind him. I said, O oh, Abba Amr, who told you about it? He said, Ibn Abbas. Hadith 249 Narrated Abu Sa'id al-Qudri, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Ghusl, taking a bath, on Friday is compulsory for every Muslim reaching the age of puberty. Hadith 250 Narrated Ibn Abbas, One night I slept at the house of my aunt Maimuna and the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, slept, too. He got up, for prayer, in the last hours of the night, and performed a light ablution from a hanging leather skin. Umar, the sub-narrator described that the ablution was very light. Then he stood up for prayer, and I got up too and performed the ablution in the same way, and joined him on his left side. He pulled me to the right and prayed as much as Allah willed. Then he lay down and slept, and I heard his breath sounds till the Muad'din came to him to inform him about the Fajr prayer. He left with him for the prayer, and prayed without repeating the ablution. Sufyan, the sub-narrator, said, We said to Umar, Some people say, The eyes of the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, sleep but his heart never sleeps. Umar said, Ubay bin Umar said, The dreams of the prophets are divine inspirations. Then he recited, O oh my son, I have seen in dream that I was slaughtering you, offering you in sacrifice. Hadith 251 Narrated Anas bin Malik, My grandmother Malaika invited Allah's messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, for a meal which she had prepared specially for him. He ate some of it and said, Get up. I shall lead you in the prayer. I brought a mat that had become black owing to excessive use, and I sprinkled water on it. Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, stood on it and prayed two rakat, and the orphan was with me, in the first row, and the old lady stood behind us. Hadith 252 Narrated Ibn Abbas, Once I came riding a she-ass and I, then, had just attained the age of puberty. Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, was leading the people in prayer at Mina, facing no wall. I passed in front of the row and let loose the she-ass for grazing and joined the row, and no one objected to my deed. Hadith 253 Narrated Aisha, once Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, delayed the Isha prayer, till Umar informed him that the women and children had slept. Then Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, came out and said, None from amongst the dwellers of earth have prayed this prayer except you. In those days none but the people of Medina prayed. Hadith 254 Narrated Abdur Rahman bin Abbas, a person asked Ibn Abbas, Have you ever presented yourself at the Eid prayer with Allah's Apostle? He replied, Yes. And had it not been for my kinship, position, with the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, it would not have been possible for me to do so, for he was too young. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, went to the mark near the house of Kathir bin us Sult and delivered a sermon. He then went towards the women. He advised and reminded them, and asked them to give alms. So the woman would bring her hand near her neck and take off her necklace and put it in the garment of Bilal. Then the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, and Bilal came to the house. Hadith 255 Narrated Aisha, once Allah's messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, delayed the Isha prayer, till Umar informed him that the women and children had slept. The Prophet, 
peace and blessings be upon him, came out and said, None except you from amongst the dwellers of earth is waiting for this prayer. In those days, there was no prayer except in Medina, and they used to pray the Isha prayer between the disappearance of the twilight and the first third of the night. Hadith 256 Narrated Ibn Umar, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, If your women ask permission to go to the mosque at night, allow them. Hadith 257 Narrated Umm Salama, the wife of the Prophet, in the lifetime of Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, the women used to get up when they finished their compulsory prayers with Taslim. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, and the men would stay on at their places as long as Allah willed. When the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, got up, the men would then get up. Hadith 258 Narrated Aisha, when Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, finished the Fajr prayer, the women would leave covered in their sheets and were not recognized owing to the darkness. Hadith 259 Narrated Abdullah bin Abi Qatarah al-Ansari, my father said, Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, said, whenever I stand for prayer, I want to prolong it, but on hearing the cries of a child, I would shorten it, as I dislike to put its mother in trouble. Hadith 260 Narrated Aisha, had Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, known what the women were doing, he would have forbidden them from going to the mosque as the women of Bani Israel had been forbidden. Yahya bin Said, a sub-narrator, asked Umrah, another sub-narrator, were the women of Bani Israel forbidden? She replied, Yes. Hadith 261 Narrated Umm Salama, whenever Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, completed the prayer with Taslim, the women used to get up immediately, and Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, would remain at his place for some time before getting up. The sub-narrator, Az-Zuhri, said, We think, and Allah knows better, that he did so, so that the women might leave before men could get in touch with them. Hadith 262 Narrated on us, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, prayed in the house of Umm Sulaim, and I, along with an orphan, stood behind him while Umm Sulaim, stood, behind us. Hadith 263 Narrated Aisha, Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, used to offer the Fajr prayer when it was still dark, and the believing women used to return, after finishing their prayer, and nobody could recognize them owing to darkness, or they could not recognize one another. Hadith 264 Narrated Salim bin Abdullah, my father said, The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, If the wife of any one of you asks permission, to go to the mosque, do not forbid her. Hadith 265 Narrated on us, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, prayed in the house of Umm Sulaim, and I, along with an orphan, stood behind him while Umm Sulaim, stood, behind us. Hadith 266 Narrated Umm Salama, whenever Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, completed the Salat with Taslim, the women used to get up immediately, and Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, would remain at his place for some time before getting up. The sub-narrator, Az-Zuhri, said, We think, and Allah knows better, that he did so, so that the women might leave before the men could catch up with them.